Hey, welcome back to another video. I'm Ivan Calderon, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make your chord and chord progressions more interesting. So I think it's safe to say that there are plenty of pieces of software out there right now that can help you make music. And now more than ever, you don't even need to necessarily understand music theory to create because these tools do it for you. Now I have nothing against these tools, I use them myself, however, and I've said this before, Knowing music theory, even a little bit, can open up a whole world of possibilities for you as a producer, and even if you do use these tools, knowing the basics is always a good idea. So with that being said, today I'm going to be showing you how to take your chord and chord progressions and turn them into more interesting variations by doing some simple moves. So without further ado, let's jump right in. But okay, jumping into Studio One, I am actually going to start out by bringing in a resource that's going to be tremendously helpful for the remainder of this tutorial, and that is my MIDI scales. If you're familiar with Ghost Notes, then you already know where this is going, and if not, then you will very soon. But I will start out by bringing in my production toolkit, which you can get for free by clicking the first link in the description. It comes with all the major and minor MIDI scales, which I'll show you how to use in a minute. There are triad chords in MIDI format and some loops to help you with your production. But in any case, I'm gonna go over to the folder here, the production toolkit. I'm gonna click on MIDI skills and chords. Uh, let's play in major today. And then just to make it easy, let's, let's do C major. And then I want the scale, not the chord. So I'm gonna click here. And then this here is a C major scale in MIDI format. So I'm just gonna drag it over to an empty MIDI region in Studio One. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and name this. So I'm gonna name it the C major scale. And then for this tutorial, I am going to be using a piano just to make it easy. So I'm going to create a MIDI region for that VST, and that's this here. From there, double click on that empty MIDI region for the VST you want to use, and then go over to the top left of this hamburger icon, click on that, and then activate the MIDI scale we just imported. Now once you do that, you will see this. Now these notes are not active, they're what we call ghost notes, and they're essentially a visual aid to help you program without fear, because now, as long as you place a MIDI note on any one of these highlighted regions, you know that you will be playing or programming within key. But okay, moving on, the first thing we have to do is we have to create a chord progression. Now, most chords are what we call triad chords because they consist of three notes, the root, the third, and the fifth. Now to create a triad chord, it's super simple. All you have to do is once you have this visual aid, these ghost notes in place, all you have to do is pick your root note. So let me go ahead and pick one. I'm gonna pick F. So I'm gonna do that here. Next, what you wanna do is you want to count up to three and five from the root note. So if F is one, G is two, A is three, B is four, C is five, and we have effectively just created a triad chord and specifically the F major chord, and that sounds like this. So let's go ahead and continue this chord progression. I'm gonna pick another root note, so let's do, let's do A. So A is one. B is 2, C is 3, D is 4, E is 5. And this is an A minor chord. Let's go ahead and keep going. Let's pick one more. We'll make this a three chord progression just to make it easy. Let's pick, let's pick a G. So G is 1, A is 2, B is 3, C is 4, D is 5. And this is a G major chord. So now our chord progression sounds like this. Now that sounds fine, but I do want to spice it up a little bit. So let's go ahead and modify this real quick. Uh, let's do that there. Duplicate that. Let's bring this over. And then now, our chord progression should sound something like this. Okay. 
Okay, now that we have our basic chord progression, the first way to make it more interesting is to add what we call bass notes. Now, whenever you play the piano, typically you would play the triad chords with your right hand and then the bass notes with your left hand. Now, all a bass note is, is a lower octave or a lower version of your root note. So going back into Studio One, if we take our first chord, the F major chord, this here, the F, is our root note. So to create bass notes for that, all you have to do is find lower octaves or lower versions of that F. Our root note is F3, so a lower version would be an F2. So we can go ahead and just add a note there. And our chord goes from sounding like this to this. You can take it a step further and add one more bass note below that. So let's look for F1. And now we get this. So let's go ahead and do that for the remainder of these chords. I'm gonna skip the A because I kind of want that to be a pickup note. So I'm gonna extend this. Let's do the same thing for the G. So G2. And G1. Let's duplicate that because it's the same chord after that. And then we'll do the same thing for the F. We'll just copy this over. So now our chord progression went from sounding like this. to this. Now you can always play around with the velocity of these notes. So if you don't want the bass notes to be as prominent, you could always just lower the velocity to 50. I might just bring it down to like 25. And then it sounds like this. So the first way to make your chord and chord progressions more interesting is to add bass notes. Okay, now the second way to make your chords and chord progressions more interesting is to invert them. Now the way to invert a chord is simply by flipping the order in which the original three notes are played. Now by default, every triad chord is going to have two inversions. So if you go back into Studio One, let's take this F major chord again as an example. Right now it's in what we call the root position because we have the root, the third, and the fifth. So the order is one three, five, and notice how the lowest note in this chord right now is our one. To invert this chord, all we have to do is make either the third or the fifth note the lowest note. So what do I mean by that? If I take this F and send it to a higher octave, I've effectively made the third note the lowest note. And now the order is three, five, one, and this is known as the first inversion. If I take this A and send it to a higher octave, I've now made the fifth note the lowest note, and now the order is five, one, three, and this is known as a second inversion. So in the end, we have the root position, inversion one, and inversion two. All three are the exact same chord, but played in three different ways to give you three different vibes. Now, something important to mention here is that you can take either one of these inversions, either one or two, and send them to higher or lower octaves of themselves to give your chord progression a little bit more variation. So for example, this right here is a second inversion. If I think this is too high, I can send this to a lower octave. So just drag all these notes down to here, and now we turn it into this. And same thing with the first inversion. If I think this is too high, I can drag all these down to here. It is completely up to you. Now, I like to use inversions whenever I'm playing a chord progression again, just so it doesn't sound very monotonous or boring. So for example, I'm gonna take this here, which is our original chord progression, and I'm gonna duplicate it to make this eight bars. And let me extend this here. And then what I'm gonna do is starting on the second time I play this progression, I'm going to take that F and invert it. So now our chord progression sounds like this. So we literally played the exact same chords twice, but because I inverted that 
second half or that first chord in that second half, it sounds different. It gives it a different vibe. So then the second way to make your chords and chord progressions more interesting is by inverting them. Moving on the last and final way, at least for this video, to make your chord and chord progressions more interesting is by turning them into seventh chords. Now, what does that mean? In the beginning, we talked about how a basic triad chord consists of the root, the third, and the fifth. To make it into a seventh uh, chord variant, all you have to do is add the seventh note above the root. So again, going back into Studio One, if we take that F major from the beginning and we add a seventh note above the root, we get F, G, A, B, C, D, it would be an E. So if we add a note there, we just turn this into an F major seventh. So the original F sounds like this. The seventh sounds like this. Now you can do this with any chord in whatever key or scale you decide to pick. However, I do have to warn you, depending on which chord you pick, you might either end up with a major or minor seventh, which tends to come off as very smooth, soulful, jazzy R&B kind of vibe, or you might end up with a dominant seventh, which comes off as more, more powerful. So for example, if I take this G and add a seventh above that, which would be an F, we get a G dominant seven, which sounds like this. Compare that to an F major seven, which is again, more smooth, kind of soulful vibe. Now, the more you do this, the more you're going to know and remember which chords get turned into what, but at the end of the day, turning them into seventh variations or seventh chords is a great way to spice up your chords and chord progressions. Now, as far as my progression goes, let me go ahead and just finish this off. So I am going to keep this F major seven here. I like that. I don't like this E being so close to the other one, so I'm actually going to invert this A minor by bringing this E down. And now we should have this. Now you probably already guessed this, but you can of course mix and match these methods. So right now what I have so far is inversions and seventh variants. Now I am going to add my bass notes back in and I'm going to duplicate it to fill out my progression here. And now this is the final progression. Now, just so you get the, the whole picture, let's go ahead and play the original chord progression. So it was this here. And again, nothing wrong with that, but once you start to spice it up and add different elements, you get this. So to sum it all up, three ways to make your chords and chord progressions more interesting is by adding bass notes, by inverting some of the chords, and by turning them into seventh chords. These three things, and of course you could always just mix and match them, but these three things will turn your chords into more interesting versions of themselves and hopefully help you take your production to the next level. And again, if you want my production toolkit, it is completely free. All you have to do to get it is click the first link in the description. It comes with all the major and minor MIDI scales like the one I showed you here today. They're triad chords in MIDI format and some free loops. So definitely go ahead and pick that up. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you're not already, but I'll see you on the next one.